Good morning, afternoon, night, whatever time it is. Welcome back. Here is um, here's section three of chapter ten. Are you ready? This is gonna be a nice short one, I guarantee. You. Most of the onus goes on you for some things out of the book and watching the video. So you've already read that article about the cars, okay? Think about the context of that article. It was from July 1978 when there was uh, really high gas prices and the need for efficient vehicles. There are a lot of gas guzzlers. If you want, you should Google um, a 1979 Plymouth Duster. Okay, this is the car that we had growing up, and that thing was a gas guzzler. It was a tank. It was an. Uh, it was. It was yellow. It was embarrassing to be in. And they're looking for ways of saving money on gas. Now, a few years ago, gas prices were really high, and guess what the push was for again? It was for these hybrid cars. And the Prius, unfortunately, became very popular it was all over the place. So that's the context of that. That's the issue we got to deal with today. We got to deal with the issue of efficiency and entropy. Entropy, you're, you're pretty much on your own. You're going to watch the video. You're going to read the book. Um, and, and you understand that concept from, from chemistry already. But today I'm going to briefly go over with you some things here about the second law of thermodynamics. Here's what you're going to need. Uh, you can have your textbook. That would be great. You can look at those pictures there. Uh, you're going to be doing the concept challenge on page 353 with the power plants and cooling engines. And then uh, in your handouts, pages 18, 19, and 20. That's pretty much all you need. You're going to especially use page 20. That's that's the big deal. That's what you really, 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 really want. Would you tell me what I want, what I really, really want? No, I'm not going to. So, okay, here's page 18. Here's our objectives for this section you want to be able to recognize why the second law of thermodynamics requires two bodies of different temperature for work to be done. That's going to be that schematic with the heat, uh, uh, the heat source and the heat sink. Okay, so that's what you want to think when you think two bodies. Where's the heat coming from? Where's it going? Calculate the efficiency of an, a heat engine. That's mostly going to be there from page uh, 20 in your handout. And then relating the disorder of system, that's what you'll do in the reading and in watching the video, um, the online video there from 60 Symbols. That'll, that'll be taken care of for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll look at uh, my notes and then we'll, we'll go to, um, to your notes. And uh, remember we had this picture here, the schematic. Um, we start up here with where does the heat come from? Where's the heat that's getting input? There it is. It's coming from this high temperature heat source. But not all of it gets converted into work. Some of it gets dribbled down here into the cold temperature, the low temperature heat sink. There has to be a difference between the hot and the cold or else nothing's going to happen. Guaranteed. If the car gets too hot, all the engine parts get too hot, this cold gets about, it, the, it, the temperature goes up on your gauge there. What happens to your car? It stops. We had this on vacation in that Plymouth Duster one time. We were coming up the hill to, uh, to Hatchapi before we got home, and the car overheated, so we had to stop because the car would just shut down. There was nowhere that the heat could go. It was going, there wasn't a difference in temperature, so there would be no arrows flowing down. It was, it was static. So I obviously didn't have an ideal engine there. The wasted heat was not returned and the hot and cold were the same there was there's no work being done these have to be different q i is like the input heat this is the hot and w means the wasted this is the cold and if they're the same if it's like five minus five that equals zero you get no work so this leads to discussion of how efficiency works and you can pause and you can copy this stuff down but i think page 20 will do it a little bit better than this these are my notes, and so it's a little confusing with the I's and W's, input and waste. You've got hot and cold on your sheet, which is much better. Over here, it's got the, the ratio of cold to hot. But you can pause, and you can write that down, and that would be fine. Um, I'm going to go back over to the, to the PowerPoint, and we'll look at that other page. Oh, let's see what we got there. Yeah, second law of thermodynamics says no cyclic process that converts heat entirely into work is possible. It's just not possible. 
And so if we're going to measure it, how much of that energy we actually do get to use to make heat, that's what we're measuring here. We're measuring the energies, the engine's efficiency, a measure of the useful energy taken out of a process re relative to the total energy put in. It's work input compared to work output. It's like in the Bible or it describes he is working in you. And so work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The, to the degree that you work out what God's working in, you're spiritually efficient. Okay, now here we have what work actually gets done compared to that heat reservoir. Okay, That's one way of looking at it. What's the difference between the hot and the cold parts? compared to the to the amount of heat I'm putting in. Or 1 minus the cold, the reservoir, what's the end temperature? What's the wasted part compared to the input that you put QH? It's another way of, of looking at that thing. And so, uh, number one, efficiency is unitless, but secondly, it's always less than 1 or less than 100%. You're never, ever, ever going to get 100% efficiency. Now, how do, you, how do you increase the efficiency of an engine? Now, I'll give you a, a one big key item that you can do. That would be down here. You're going to increase the efficiency, and this makes sense if you look at the equations here, by making that heat source really hot or the heat sink really cold. And so what do we do in our engines? We, we have it insulated. We have uh, coolants. Okay, the coolant helps keep the engine parts cold, so when the hot thing in there is hot, there's a really big difference between those two temperatures. And lo look at this, this efficiency thing over here, comparing the cold to the hot. If the hot gets bigger, that makes that a smaller value for that fraction, 1 minus 1 fifth compared to 1 minus 1 sixth. You gain some efficiency there by increasing the hot or by reducing the cold. So with my Plymouth Duster, we always had to make uh, leave the car there for like 10 minutes when we want to go somewhere to warm up. You don't have to do that anymore. The car is turned on, you go. But in a cold environment and with an old car, you always have to warm the car up first. That increases the efficiency of that engine by, by creating a bigger difference between the hot and the cold uh, parts of the schematic up here, the hot and the cold section. Bigger difference means that more of that heat converts into work, and then, of course, that's what you want. You're going to lose heat through the engine parts and through friction, and so we, we lubricate, we put oil in our cars, and oil that doesn't break down, we put the good stuff in. We, we add uh, coolants to our, um, to our stuff, and we have transmission fluids. We have all those things to try to keep the temperature a big enough difference. And think those drag racers, man, they get, they like blow the, the gaskets out basically almost every single time. It's fire that comes out of that thing. And so when they get going, they want it hot. They want the engine hot. So they get a big difference between the environment and, and, um, and the engine. And, and I've watched tractor pulls too, and they always, they do it on cold nights oftentimes. I don't know if that's just a redneck thing or what. The cold nights, a hot engine, they get a greater amount of work done. And they can pull that thing and win that prize, whatever it is, a, a, a big corn cob on a, on a pedestal or something like that. So there you go. That's the essence of, of uh, efficiency. Okay, so now the, uh, the rest of the job that you have is to go ahead and, and uh, watch that 60 Symbols video of entropy confusion is about 10 minutes long and then go back to your book and read the next section about efficiency uh, also you're supposed to do practice C where you'll um, you'll have practice problem in your handouts that starts on page uh, 21 and following so you get an example there and then work those problems with these equations here or probably this equation right here will be a little bit better for you all right there you go have a good day good day